Hey everyone, my name is Professor Dunn and I will be your online instructor for Introductory Survey of Art. We are an asynchronous class, meaning that we never meet in person or as a class online. So let me just show you here in Blackboard. And so the first thing you'll see on the side here is my contact information. So if you would like to email me, here is my email address. I will hold office hours Tuesday from 11.30 to 1.30. I have the syllabus here for you that you can download it or you can read it like this. Uh, I do not use a textbook for this class. Textbooks, in my opinion, have gotten way too expensive, so they are not required. Instead, I use online free um, websites and videos and all sorts of things. A lot comes from a website called Smart History, which was started by the Graduate CUNY Center for the reason that textbooks have become too expensive. So I'm not gonna sit here and read this to you. I think that you can take your time to read through all of this. I just wanna highlight some of the key things here. We are a writing intensive class so that means that there is an element of writing that goes along with this class. So what I've done is I've broken down a research paper for you into different steps. We're going to put that all together and voila, you have a really well written research paper, or at least that's the idea. So you will do five low stake assignments, two high stake assignments, uh, and this is going to produce a research paper. Then you will have three tests. The tests, I don't give a midterm or a final, and the tests are cumulative. So instead, I have taken the information for the semester and I've chunked it into three sections, and at the end of each section, you're tested on that. You will receive a outline to complete prior to taking the test, and then you are to have the outline with you while you take the test. So in essence, it's an open book test, and the questions will be multiple choice and fill in. Then we have weekly homework assignments. The weekly reading assignments and quizzes work like this. You have a reading assignment or a video you're watching and a quiz that goes along with it. This proves to me that one, you've actually looked at the material and two, you're comprehending the material. Now, the quizzes and tests are very different. The tests are timed, the quizzes are not. Quizzes are untimed, you can take as long as you want, and you may take them twice. Only the highest grade counts towards your running grade in this class. Then because this is an asynchronous class, we also have discussion boards, weekly discussion boards. These are really important because they're going to give us a sense of community even though we never see each other in person. And then I have the breakdown here for you of uh, how I will be grading. The tests are going to work be equal to 19 points. So your research paper, we have five low stake assignments. Each one is worth two points. Cumulatively, then they're worth 10 points. You have your first high stake assignment is your full, full draft. So that's five points. And then your second high stakes assignment is your final paper. That, that is worth 15 points. You have the weekly reading quizzes. They are worth uh, 36 points altogether. And you have weekly discussion boards worth 15 points altogether. I'm really big on discussion boards being turned in on time. So they will always be due by 11.59 p.m. Sunday night. Plagiarism is not tolerated. We know what plagiarism is, right? So that is when you are copying something verbatim, meaning exactly, and then you're taking credit for it, or you're paraphrasing something very closely and you're taking credit for it, or it also can be with AI. If you're using chat GPT, something like that, to try to write your paper for you, that is also considered plagiarism. And I have computer programs that I can run your paper through and it will tell me whether or not you used AI. So 
please do not put yourself into that circumstance because you will end up getting a zero on your paper if I catch you doing that. I want to do that, okay? I have a course calendar for you here, and each week we have um, everything scheduled out as everything is due, okay? The red ones are written to hopefully bring your attention to them, but I have it done multiple ways. So you can go through the syllabus that way. And next I have announcements and uh, the, the thing I have up here for you is just um, an email that I received from the Writing Center. And since this is a writing intensive class, I decided to post it in the announcements. I highly suggest using the Writing Center at least to proofread your paper before you submit it. And then we have the assignments, super important, assignments. So I have all your dates for you here as to when your tests are due, when the low stake assignments are due, all of that is here. Then you'll say, wow, extra credit. So I have two extra credits I always do. And this is the way they work. We have 15 weeks. I divide them in, uh, approximately in half. So you complete, I think in this case, it's the first eight weeks. And then I look at all your homework. And if you have completed all the homework, you get one point added onto your final grade. You don't even have to have gotten hundreds on anything. You could, could have gotten like a 20 on one of the homeworks. It doesn't matter. You completed it. Then at the end of this semester, I do this again, May, May 5th. If you've completed all the homeworks up until that point, from the beginning of the semester to May 5th, you get another one point added on to your final grade. So you can technically get 102 in this class. Okay. Now, completing a quiz does not mean you simply open it. It means that you have attempted the questions. So please be aware of that. You will submit your full draft of the paper and your final paper here. And then you have weekly assignments. So because the first week is so short, I actually put the first two together for you. Um, and then we move on from there. You in student view will only see these two folders at this point. So when you open this up, you're going to see week one and week two. So week one, pretty simple. Going to watch the following video, or videos, I should say, the two videos here for you. And then you're going to um, complete the discussion board. So the discussion board is simply, you know, how to get to know you. It's like a, you know, introduction thing. So I have for you a video. If you don't know how to do a discussion board, you've never done one before, you can click on that and watch it. But I'm asking you to just answer these questions. There are two ways to access the discussion board. You can click here. Create a thread, click this and create a thread. Or you can access discussion boards over here, this, and introduce yourself. I see six people. Some people have already been in here. All right, so we've got that running. Now we have the second part of this. Week two, or technically like week 1B, I always list everything that you need to do here. So you'll find when you open up each week, you'll have all your assignments. So here are your notes. And the reason why I have it open for you now is, yeah, sometimes the notes are a little on the long side, but remember this is instead of a three hour class, right? So we have, you can watch, go through these, and I have embedded in them videos. See, there's one of me talking, 
and I have various videos and I have reading notes for you. Okay, so you go all the way to the bottom here. And then here will be your second discussion board where after you've gone through the notes, I'm asking you these questions and I'm hoping that you can tell me some differences between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic. Make sure that each of your posts, all of your posts, your responses, everything, they should be 50 words or more. Um, we don't have posts that are like, hey, great job. You won't get credit for that. Next, we have the reading and the quizzes. So you will open this link here and take a quiz. Open this link here, take a quiz. Open this link here, take a quiz. They're very, very short, okay? So you have until Sunday, February 4th to finish, that, to finish those up. They're multiple choice, again, untimed, and you may take them two times. Only the highest grade will count toward your overall grade in the class. And then the last will be your um, low stakes assignment just super easy. You're going to pick who you want to research for your research paper. So I have provided you with lots of links to look through. Um, your person needs to have created his or her artwork before 1850. No Picasso, no Van Gogh, no Andy Warhol. I'm hoping you actually pick somebody that you really don't know. So you can click on these. These are going to give you many, many, many piece of people. Then you're going to email me your choices. Choice one, choice two. The reason why you're sending me two choices is because once somebody takes that person, no one else in the class can have that person. Okay, this is because I do not want to read 20 papers on the same artist. So I make this rule. All right, this counts as 2% of your grade or two points of your grade and must be emailed to me by February 4th. I will then approve the artist and let you begin writing the next thing, which is a thesis statement. And I wanna make it clear though that you're only writing your paper about one artist. So this is pretty much how I run things. When you come into the, the week, you'll see folders like this. You're gonna click on each folder, complete the work, and then um, everything will be finished and done, hopefully by Sunday night at 11.59 p.m., which is my deadline to submit work. Our weeks run from Monday to Sunday. All right, so hopefully we can get off to a good start here. But if you have any problems or questions or anything like that, don't hesitate to email me. If you get any kind of accommodations, extended time, anything like that, please let me know right away so I can adjust the timing on the test for you. We have over here, we have the disability services. It, I will need an official letter or email from them. Um, from disability services stating what you are to get uh, if you are to get any kind of uh, accommodation such as extended time or anything like that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoy the class and I will be sending out videos like this throughout the semester. So for now, goodbye.